This video gives a quick revision of basic definitions and the like for complex numbers. So what are we going to do? We're going to remind you of the definition of i and j, basic rules for complex numbers by which we mean things like bod mass and the argand diagram. Now we're going to assume that this video is a revision of the above definitions so we won't do these slowly and if you really need to learn them first principles you might need an alternative resource. So first of all the definition then. So the imaginary number i or j is defined as the square root of minus 1. Now you'll find that engineers tend to use the symbol j whereas mathematicians often use the symbol i. So you need to be interchangeable and accept that either may be used depending on the context. Now i and j are taken to be the positive square root of minus 1 and of course given it's a square root there are two other roots and they will be minus a, minus i and minus j. Now what's the consequence of the definition above? Very simple one i squared or j squared is going to equal minus 1. So don't forget that because that's quite useful in many scenarios. Okay, arithmetic. Now for complex numbers or imaginary numbers the normal rules of addition and subtraction apply. So what do we mean by that? Let's have a look at this. You'll see we've got 4j plus 6j and that gives us 10j. So nothing strange just what you would expect with normal addition. What about this one then? 5j minus j clearly will give you 4j. How about this one? 17i plus 2i minus 3i minus 6i. Well, using normal addition, we get 19 minus 9, which will give us 10i. Now, one with a subtle difference, you'll see here you're given an equality, aj minus 6j equals 2j, and you're asked to solve for a. Well, if I move the 6 to the other side, you'll see I get aj equals 8j, so a must be equal to 8. OK, most numbers actually comprise a real part and an imaginary part. And again, for these, the normal rules of addition and subtraction apply. So we'll show a few examples. So here, you see I've got a real part 2, an imaginary part 4j, a real part minus 1, an imaginary part 6j. If I add all these together, the normal thing to do is first add the real bits. That's the, minus, the 2 and the minus 1. That gives me plus 1. And then add the imaginary bits, which is the 4j here and the 6j here which gives me 10j. Here's another example then. So you'll see a mixture of real and imaginary parts. So first add the real parts. That's the 3 and the 4. That will give me 7. And then add the imaginary parts. 21j minus 6j. And so that will give me plus 15j. How about this one? You'll see the real parts. I've got a 2 here and a minus 1 there. So that gives me 1. And then for the imaginary parts, I've got a 17 plus a 2 minus a 3, all multiplied by i. And so I end up with plus 16i. Again, one that you might need to solve. This has got inequality. If you look carefully here, you'll see it tells you b plus aj minus 6j equals 2 plus 2j. Well, I can start with the real bits. I've got a b on this side and a 2 on this side. So b equals 2. If I then look at the imaginary parts, I've got an aj here, a minus 6j here, and a 2j here, from which you'll see that a equals 8. And finally, of course, I could write things like this. I could say I've got a complex number z, there it is, 2 minus i, a different complex number w, 5 plus 3i. What happens if I calculate 2z plus w? Well, let's just do the real bits first. If I do 2 times the 2 in z, that's 4. Add it to the w, the real part of the w, which is 5. You'll see I get 9. If I then do the imaginary bits, 2 times minus i is minus 2i. Plus 3i gives me plus i. 
So the key thing here is what we said at the top, normal rules of addition and subtraction apply. What's an Argand diagram then? Well, complex numbers can be represented graphically by plotting the real part on the horizontal axis and the imaginary part on the vertical axis. So you'll see down here, I've marked the horizontal axis with real, and here I've marked the vertical axis as imaginary. So let's show a few examples. 4 plus j, where would you mark that? Well, you can see the real part is 4. There's 4 there. The imaginary part is just 1j, so 1 is marked here, and so the number goes is marked there. What about 3 plus 6j? Well, you'll see the real part, 3, corresponds to this bit, and for the imaginary part, 6 is over here, and so that is marked there. What about minus 2 plus 4j? Well, you see minus 2 is down here, that's the real part, 4j, that's the imaginary part, and it's marked there. How about minus 5 minus 2j? Well, you'll see minus 5, real part, is down there, minus 2j is there, and there's your number. OK, multiplication. Again, as with addition and subtraction, the key thing here is normal rules of multiplication apply. So here's an example of multiplying out some brackets. a plus b times c plus d gives you this expression here, and you'll all be able to do that quite happily. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this by complex number multiplication. So you see in the first brackets I've got 2 plus 3j, and in the second brackets I've got 4 plus 5j. So you can imagine this as being a is 2, b is 3j, c is 4, and d is 5j. So the first term that I want corresponds to a, c. Well, a is 2, c is 4, so you see I get 8. The second term I'm interested in is a times d. Well, a was 2 and d was 5j, so I get 10j. The third term was b times c. Well, b was 3j, c was 4, so I get 12j. And the final term, b times d, b was 3j, d was 5j, so I get 15j squared. Now, of course, I can simplify this by grouping common terms together. So what have we got? We can group the 10j and the 12j, and we can also remember that j squared equals minus 1, so 15j squared is in fact minus 15. So we do that, and what you'll find is if I take the 8 and the 15j squared, noting 15j squared is minus 15, I get minus 7. And if I take the 10j and the 12j, I get 22j. Here's a different example. Minus 1 times 5j, all times 4 minus 2j. Now, I'll let you do this slowly yourself, but you'll see minus 1 times 4 gives minus 4. Minus 1 times minus 2j gives 2j. 5j times 4 gives 20j. 5j times minus 2j gives minus 10j squared. And now, of course, you can simplify and add all those together. What's the definition of a complex conjugate? Well, a complex conjugate is a complex number with the same real part, that's important, so the real part is the same, but the opposite sign for the imaginary part. And sometimes people might use a bar to denote this. So here's an example. If I've got z equals 2 plus 3j, then z bar, you can see that bar subtly put on the top of the z there, is going to be 2 minus 3j. So let's mark these down. So 2 plus 3j is going to be there. So that's z. 2 minus 3j will be here. So there's z bar. So what do you notice? They've got the same real part, but the opposite imaginary part. What about this one then? Q equals minus 5 minus 6i, q bar minus 5 plus 6i. So let's mark those down. So I reminded you about complex conjugates because they have a very useful property. The product of a complex number and its conjugate is always 
positive real. So here's an example. If I multiply 2 plus 3j by its conjugate, which is 2 minus 3j, and you can do this more slowly if this is a little quick for you, by pausing the video and looking at it, you'll see you get 4, you get a minus 6j plus 6j, so those two terms cancel, and then a minus 9j squared, but because there's a minus 9j squared, then j squared is minus 1, the two minuses go, and I get plus 9. So you see the result is 13. What about this one? Minus 5 times plus 2j times minus 5 minus 2j, and you see you get 25 plus 10j minus 10j minus 4j squared. And again, you see these bits cancel. And the minus 4j squared ends up as just plus 4. So you end up with 29. Now, there's a little note here that you see this result is linked to Pythagoras. So if I plot these complex numbers on the Argon diagram, where's 2 plus 3j? You see it comes here. And if I ask you what's the distance okay, from the origin to that complex number, you'd have told me it's the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 13. And what number did you notice you got up here when you did a product of the complex numbers, a, a complex number with its conjugate? You got 13. What about the second example? Minus 5 plus 2j. So minus 5 plus 2j is going to put you here. Obviously the conjugate was below and, oh sorry, I've put that in the wrong place. Let's just move it a bit. I meant here. And again, if you do Pythagoras and try and find the distance from the origin, you will get the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 29. And what did you notice here? 4 plus 25 is 29. Now, just to show you that this is generic, this last box has said, if I just write my complex number as a plus ib, complex conjugate a minus ib, multiply it out, you get a squared minus minus abi plus abi, those cancel, minus b squared i squared, and clearly that changes to a plus b squared. So you can see you get a squared plus b squared. OK, now why have we just done the complex conjugate? Because you need to know what to do when you get a complex number in a denominator. Sometimes it's easier to express a complex number in a denominator by using complex conjugates in order to move all the imaginary parts out of the denominator and put them in the numerator. And I'll show you what we mean. We're just going to use simple multiplication, no tricks. So here we go. You see I've got 2 over 2 plus 3j. And I want to get rid of the imaginary parts in the denominator. So what I've done is I've multiplied the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate. You see I've multiplied both top and bottom by 2 minus 3j. Now on the previous slide we've shown that if you multiply a number by its complex conjugate you end up with a positive real. So the denominator will now be a positive real. So this is what we end up with. You see we've got 4 minus 6j over 13. So we've achieved our objective. We've got rid of the imaginary part in the denominator. Here's a different example, a bit more generic. What if I had a plus ib over c plus id? In order to get rid of the imaginary part in the denominator, I multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate. So there you can see c minus id c minus id and multiplying top and bottom by the same thing. And now I look at the denominator and I see I've got a number multiplied by its conjugate, so that will give me a positive real number. So there's the result. You see, OK, the numerator looks a bit messier. AC plus BD over I times BC minus AD, but the denominator is positive real. Now, this gives us a lead into how to do division. Division can be clumsy. 
when complex numbers are expressed as real and imaginary parts. And while you can do this, you won't have to do it too often, but just a simple trick is use complex conjugates and it will make your life a little easier. So what we're telling you is if you end up with a problem that says something like z divided by w, all you do is first multiply top and bottom by w bar, by the conjugate, and that will make the bottom positive real. <coughs> and so in fact, you've replaced what seems to be a division by a multiplication. Now obviously this is identical what we did to what we did on the previous page. Now, a problem to finish off then. Can you express the complex number below as a simple fraction with a real denominator? And you see, well, it's easy enough. All I need to do is multiply by the conjugate. So I'll write out the number, there it is. And then I multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, top and bottom. There we go. Now, the other thing I might do is look at the 2 plus i times i. So if I circle this and say, can I simplify that? And I'll just put a little thing over here. Then clearly that reduces to 2i plus i squared. I'm going to do that because it will make my life easier. So what have I got? I've got 2i minus 1 times 4 minus i, all divided by 4 plus i times 4 minus i which is 4 squared plus 1 squared. And therefore, if I now multiply it out longhand, you see I get 8i. That's 2i times 4. I get plus 2i squared. That's 2i times minus i. And I've made the sign wrong there. It's minus 2i squared. Then I get minus 1 times minus 4, which is minus 4. And minus 1 times i, which is minus i, all divided by 17. I'm going to stop there because the rest of the steps should be easy. So some conclusions. We've given a quick revision of complex number definitions and properties. We've given a reminder of the definition of the argon diagram, a reminder that the normal rules of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division apply, and we've demonstrated the useful property of the complex conjugate OK, so basically the product of a complex number and its conjugate is positive real, and you can use this in order to simplify divisions.